Firstly, thanks to Pete. I mean, um, without Pete, probably we use gamification world less. So in three years in a row right now, gamification Europe is not only focused on Europe and globally. Uh, so we are very of uh, in gamification Europe as a game fed Turkey community. Uh, and it's very motivate us, Pete. Thank you for this opportunity. And such a honor to have Tatiana and Sandra and Yukai in my panel. Uh, I'm a lecturer in Turkey, actually. I'm lecturing game design and gamification in Bahçeşehir and Bilgi University. Uh, we had Yukai, uh, I think three years ago, Yukai, right? And in my university. Uh, so that was a great uh, start for uh, building a community in Turkey. Uh, we still uh, influence from him, actually. And we are going to talk about a little bit uh, building a community. And I'm, I like to really start with you, Kai. I mean, it's very hard to create, build, and engage for a long-term community. And uh, if we look up to history and just make a little bit research about it, we, we find many good examples without digitally, you know, physical communities. And they use game dynamics, you, Kai. I'm points, levels, and uh, rewards, and this kind of stuff. But in digital era, you're also running an esport uh, community too. I know esport, uh, Optosis has an esport uh, hub too, and also the gamification, already we saw it. Um, what do you think about in digital era, how we should uh, add these uh, motivational levels to the existing um, communities, Yukai? Okay, so in all transparency, I no longer sponsor esports team because it was a, it's called Heroes of the Storm, and we had a top three uh, North American team, but Blizzard sh shut down the whole esports team, so therefore we don't have a, a team anymore, unfortunately. It was a lot of fun. Uh, regarding your question, I think in terms of online communities, I think the most important thing is twofold. One, there needs to be refreshing content that people can talk about. And you've probably seen those events where there's like a retreat, a physical event, people show up and they're like, oh, we're so bonded, we like each other so much. And so when it ends, they create the Facebook group and they add it together. And the first week, everyone's like, yeah, so good times. We, we, everything's so happy, right? And then after two or three weeks, it all dies down and it's the guy who creates the group still wants to keep things alive. Says, hey, what do you think about this? Hey, what do you think about this? And then after you know two, three months, then it's almost nothing. Maybe every one month or every six months, someone will say, hey, remember the good times. And the problem is that there's no con new content, new events happening. It's just all living on that same good times we had six months ago. So uh, that's why sports communities tend to be very lively, right? Because there's, every week there's a new game, there's new discussions, new players, new stats. And so it's important to have what we call Core Drive 7 unpredictable and curiosity, something that constantly uh, freshes things up. And the other part is uh, what we talked about, making people feel appreciated more easily. So uh, a lot of the points of badges, these are more what we call left brain extrinsic motivation design. But I think the core thing is if you allow people to uh, express appreciation for each other more easily, more people want to be there because everyone feels underappreciated everywhere they go, at home, at school, at their work. So if they go to a community, a community and they instantly feel appreciated, they just want to be there more often. And then it's about how do you get people to express appreciation. So I think those are the uh, two most important key points. Thank you, Kai. I'm just right through to Tatiana because um, I, my main question actually uh, focus also on reference from the eSport and gaming community. So what is the main problems and pain points you are seeing with your experience, which is great, Tatiana? Uh, in this community and how we should gamify them? Yeah, that's a great question. And in fact, um, I'd say there's less problems um, in, in the esports and gaming space and more white spaces, right? The esports and gaming communities that exist on Twitch, exist on YouTube and Discord and, and social channels and, and within the game itself are um, incredibly passionate, um, you know, and, and and uh, very active within the within their communities, um, but there definitely is an opportunity to engage more and to uh, and to you know essentially find more opportunities for interactivity. Um, live streaming, in particular, as I mentioned in my last. Um, 
TikTok is, is growing so significantly. And I think the thing to keep in mind when viewing a gaming stream, when viewing a live esports, um, live esports content on Twitch or on YouTube, this is a very active experience, right? This is um, incredibly engaging. It's, it's not a one-to-one -one replacement of television. You have a live chat, uh, taking place. You have the opportunity to program overlays and, and buttons and, and uh, you know, there's links continuously being shared. There's, uh, there's a, it's a, it's a full kind of um, experiential platform in my opinion. So thinking about live streaming and, and the integration around it, you can think of going from media into engagement and live experiences. Um, and it's the ones and the areas that, you know, I've really been focusing on in relation to that is how fans can interact with the, you know, interact with the content and actually impact it, right? So creating, um, you know, voting systems that allow for people to vote in real time for what the influencer might do or predict in real time uh, whether the, in, you know, whether the influencer, whether that team is going to win. Uh, Twitch actually just recently announced a new product called Predictions, where um, you can actually uh, wager channel points in, in, in platform currency and, and, you know, virtual items for, um, you know, making estimates on, on what is going to happen in that live stream. Uh, so, I'd say that opportunity for interactivity is um, is incredibly powerful, and essentially the goal there should be to, you know, essentially have have fans be more participants and active and and uh, feel closer to their passion points. Thank you. I, I always love the virtual items. I know that people are more giving valuable uh, to the virtual items compared to the physical items, Tatiana. And Definitely. If I'm just trying to ask uh, Sandra, uh, my friend, uh, welcome my panel. I mean, uh, building a community globally, uh, it is a very, um, very comparing with the locally is different uh, because one of the very engaged uh, in GameFet uh, and Egypt, actually, you are uh, right now building at there. And we are very proud to be, uh, as a brotherhood, we are seeing each other, uh, this GameFed community. I'm going to ask about what is the difference right, to build a community in locally and the cultural differences in there. Okay, thank you, Orkan, and I'm really happy and proud to be uh, along with the great, amazing panelists. Um, Yukai, I'm really proud to be just next to you. <laughs> Uh, and looking forward to seeing you face to face, like on ambassadors. And I would like to take it as an opportunity to invite uh, more ambassadors to uh, join the GAMFET community, which is the Gamification Confederation um, uh, internationally. Um, the, the ambassadors mainly, uh, what we were trying to do in the past year is to restructure and try to add more uh, motivating elements to uh, capture the, um, the uh, and increase en engagement for those ambassadors. So uh, if you become a country ambassador of gamification, you're going to have a virtual badge that says uh, so, as well as um, you'll get more discounts and uh, opportunities to be uh, speakers in such amazing um, uh, conferences and uh, we can like also uh, Europe. <laughs> like <Gamification> yeah. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and any other gamification uh, conference and we will also try to get you um, uh, more discounts in other services as well as um, uh, create like uh, uh, panels where the highlight is on yourself so being a represent uh, representative of your country and a gamification leader um, will be something that is actually Actually, um, right now, uh, head turning uh, for all the governments, uh, which uh, I'm saying so because, uh, like last year, I have received a call from the uh, Minister of Youth uh, Assistant, and he was like, We've heard about gamification and we're interested in what is actually gamification doing and how to engage the community. So uh, it has been really uh, a trigger nowadays. 
coming back to the question where we how to motivate different cultures uh, using gamification, we had uh, a few experiences uh, dealing with different cultures. We've been uh, to uh, Nasaga, uh, where we delivered um, a workshop there, and um, I would uh, call them um, like the. Uh, the, the three uh, use. So the first use is going to be the uncommon uh, triggers. Usually uncommon triggers uh, is something that's not common. So something we used in, in the saga was actually uh, using the hexad model, but in a different way. Um, we chose the theme of uh, Egyptian um, queens and kings and gods and goddesses in USA. So um, we, we chose this theme uh, characterizing each character in the hexad model and uh, this was a very engaging thing because it's uh, not a common thing that every day uh, the US uh, community uh, gets exposed to a different uh, stories and Egyptian so this is the first um, you that uh, we have been uh, exposed to the other thing uh, the second you is understanding uh, the culture within the culture sometimes um, uh, you are like for example in Egypt uh, we have still different cultures within the company some are more like open some are are pretty tight so um, one of the projects that we have been uh, exposed to is dealing with a Saudi Arabian client and um, and uh, he we we've put into consideration uh, even the characteristics and features of how the avatar looks uh, how uh, he's gonna relate to this person is the avatar gonna be veiled um, and actually we tried um, our best to for fulfill the needs um, and one of the requests that we um, got from this client was he wants three female avatars for the female uh, audience and three male avatars for the um, male audience. So this is um, how we should listen to the different uh, cultures uh, when creating uh, gamification. And the last you is utilizing um, immediately or instantly, like within the class. Um, in Jordan, we had an experience where the, the, the attendees were really hyped and they were like very energetic that they, uh, they took their storytelling to the next level that they started acting it. So we, we kept on doing such uh, uh, activities. Whereas when we were in Kuwait, the, the, the high uh, intensity activities was not of uh, much um, uh, motivation to this audience. They preferred listening to stories and narrations. So we accommodated uh, accordingly in in, in that phase. We love narrations. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sandra. And I'm just going to ask you, Kai, um, I mean, in Octalysis Prime, I just sent a uh, um, link uh, at chatbot. Uh, there are many uh, foreign people from all over the world. I mean, you can give more detail about it, but uh, without technology, uh, comparing and reference your uh, model from a core drive, which core drives is important in community? Uh, I think so. The key thing about those eight core drives is that everything we do is based on one or more of these eight core drives, which means that if there's none of those eight there, there's zero motivation, no behavior. And then obviously the biggest thing of a community is what we call core drive five, social influence and relatedness, right? A community is about people connecting with each other. Now, social influence could be more white hat, which is about collaboration, showing social appreciation, like I talk about, give, gifting, uh, but it could also be more black hat, which is about competition and peer pressure. And we know, again, white hat uh, is for long-term sustainable uh, growth and, and longevity kind of uh, environments. Black hat is more for driving urgency and obsession. So, uh, so it's good to have a bit of both because the black hat, the competition, makes it kind of thrilling at the beginning. There's always, a, it's short bursts, it's good. Uh, but if it's a year-long competition, most people don't like to be in a constant state of competing with their colleagues, their friends. Uh, and they burn out. So I think that's definitely the strongest. And then also I would focus more on uh, what we we'll call the right brain quarter. So besides social influence, it's empowerment of creating and feedback, giving people meaningful choices, uh, autonomy, ways to express themselves. So different avatars, different ways to customize how they look to others. 
and then the unpredictability and curiosity, which is again refreshing content that there's always something new when you come back, as opposed to, oh, it's the same old thing like going to work, you know exactly what you're going to face. Uh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I'm supporting to you. I can. I remember. Can you remember that? And uh, one of the big. Um, it's old times. You know, you travel a lot, uh, and when you entered Octosis Prime, you try to be um, uh, know and try to catch where Yukai is now. You know, if you can know, you can more collect coin. <laughs> can you remember that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. that was a great. I mean, at the beginning for everyone. It, it, this social influence and I'm coming through to Tatiana and what what are the most uh, common technologies platform uh, one of our uh, student Arzu is just shared discord link of GameFed Turkey we found it discord very useful for community and oh, yeah. for future I mean which kind of technologies social platform is going to be more engaging for communities uh, great question so um, you know you mentioned discord which is uh, you know, so crucial for game communities now. Um, the thing, the way to think about Discord is it is really about um, hyper, hyper engagement, taking your most core and most passionate fans and, you know, bringing them together. And there are definitely ways to gamify through the Discord platform. I really love um, this recent case study of Red Bull doing a, um, a leaderboard within, within Discord and they did League of Legends one-on-ones, um, but specifically for the Discord community to participate in. So so there's a lot of ways to gamify that. Um, and then I mentioned live streaming. I think in particular, Twitch is a incredibly powerful space for interactivity and gamification and, and essentially has been this creative uh, space um, and a, and a way to um, replace content that's missed that's been missing um, due to covid um, examples that i love include burberry doing uh twitch's first fashion show um they they did their re uh, reveal um, of their new collection um in a live stream on Twitch. Uh, similarly, um, Honda revealed their new uh, Civic um, in Twitch. Uh, but even beyond that, um, case studies like that, uh, one activation that I had the pleasure of working on earlier this year was with our clients at Nutter Butter. Um, we did a 12 hour Twitch influencer marathon, right? We partnered with about um, eight different influencers and then uh, headlined with Steve Aoki who has his own Twitch channel. And each of these influencers were programming different types of content, right? Different games, different things, everything with nut with a nutty twist, right? Everything was, um, you know, how do we do a nutter nutty twist on each of the different uh, content pieces? And uh, the fun, component where we really pushed the gamification and where we really wanted to try new things was with um, the technology that we leveraged. We partnered with an organization called Stream Elements that um, specializes in in-stream graphics. And we paired those in-stream graphics to the chat itself. So we could use the chat to vote on challenges that the influencers might take. If they were playing Fortnite, the, um, the fans could vote, are they going to um, are they going to, uh, you know, ride a shark or they ha they're going to win this game, but they have to do it by a trick shot or they have to wear the banana suit, things like that. And they'd do exclamation point banana, exclamation point shark. We also had um, components where you could fill a meter in real time um, using a certain, you know, hashtag. Enough uses of the hashtag would trigger some sort of activity, a, a live giveaway. Um, we talked about virtual rewards being a really great uh, way to do that. Um, or uh, a funny dance. Uh, and what I loved about all of these different components is it was really the, the fans being able to impact what they were watching and the content that they were viewing um, in a way that you know, we don't often see. And, it, and that's where, what I mean when, to, when I talk about turning uh, media into experiential and uh, live streaming being a space of experience um, and ex uh, and gamification. So uh, what I loved about that, just one last note on that, is uh, typical um, sponsored 
streams um, tend to be a little bit under average in terms of viewership because it's, you know, it's a sponsored hour. Um, this actually reached four times higher uh, the amount of typical viewership that you'd see from um, a stream like this. So I think what what really uh, what I really loved is the component, this interactivity and the gamification worked really well for this audience. And in fact, we saw um, really powerful viewership as a result. Thank you, Tatiana. I think I never heard about these examples. That was great examples. Thank you for sharing. I mean, you got it. Uh, and Sandra, let's talk about COVID-19 situation effect on this community. I mean, what you did and also we did, we tried to be, you, we opened a Discord channel and we started the Instagram live sessions. We got Yukai mm -hmm. one of the nights and we got Pete and we got Andres. Uh, these kind of uh, live sessions. It was very popular in Turkey for Instagram live sessions. Still, uh, some of uh, influencers doing that. So what you did with the COVID-19 situation for your community? Uh, well, we also got Yukai <laughs> in uh, one of our webinars uh, where um, uh, we, we started a thread. We were going to create actually gamification Middle East and Africa, which is the uh, regional version of gamification Europe in 2020, but then to us arriving. So we decided to take it online um, uh, to uh, webinars um, that would empower um, the users on um, solving challenges within um, the, the Corona era using uh, gamification. So this is um, one thing we did. Uh, before that, we were volunteering uh, to empower also uh, women uh, as well as other startups. But first, I would like to share with you something that I just got today. It's a badge of the Egyptian Chefs uh, Association. And uh, I became a member. And this is something actually uh, I'm looking forward to. So maybe one day uh, I'm going to create my own uh, cooking competition. So what, this is one common factor that, that all cultures will agree on. Uh, food is engaging. <laughs> so whenever you say coffee and consultancy, everyone will come. Pizza and play, uh, it's very attractive. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, the, the other thing when it comes to uh, volunteering, uh, we have uh, been creating uh, more info sessions for startups to uh, uh, use gamification with their marketing to start more uh, engaging techniques. And uh, one of the things that we have uh, participated in was uh, She Can, where, where you can find my profile picture where I'm holding the, the booth that was in the conference uh, called She Can. And and uh, it was for women entrepreneurs. Usually um, women um, are sometimes shy or embarrassed to show off their products and uh, start socializing. But once uh, you, you know their key, they, they're going to socialize all day. So um, what we created is uh, we created riddles within the gamification, uh, within the booths, their booths. Uh, in our booth, we created uh, very simple riddles that you can find out from their logo. And uh, when the audience just found the answer to the riddle, they would visit the booth. And when visiting the booth, they started, the, the founders of the product started talking about uh, their products. And that's when sales start uh, triggering. So um, this is one thing. Another thing is... Um, in order to create a volunteering uh, community, uh, I would say just one of the uh, things you guys mentioned was uh, the community itself, uh, inclusion. So uh, we have we've had lots of people uh, seeing our game jam nights and, uh, and telling us we, we're ready to join any game jam nights because we've seen your videos, we've seen the engagement, and we're ready to play test whenever uh, you need it. The the second thing I would say inspiration like how do you present uh, the person who is volunteering, um, such as an ambassador becoming an ambassador. He has a status, he has a title, and he has some benefits. So um, in order to Drive uh, volunteering community. We need to um, highlight those inspirations. And the third thing is um, impact and uh, feedback. How 
uh, am I really, when I am volunteering, creating uh, an impact, such as those uh, the blood donations, when you donate blood and you get a feedback or a text message saying you just saved the three-year-old girl called Mary. If I, if I found this kind of impact, then I'm going to volunteer again. One of the uh, projects that um, uh, the, our attendees created in Jordan, um, it was about building uh, shelters for the homeless. And they came up with an idea that uh, they're going to visualize, because we love visu visualization, that with each person uh, creating um, a high performance in their community, they're going to uh, gain bricks. And each brick is going to have like uh, their name on it and they're going to visualize building the shelter for that homeless uh, person so and then they can have the name of the family that has been really sheltered uh, with this um, uh, through their their company so uh, this the, the inclusion and the impact and the inspiration are really three important things when it comes to volunteering and uh, dealing with this um, uh, crisis yes I agree Sandra thank you for this insightful insights I mean I'm going to ask last question to the UK and we will wait for the uh, questions from chat um, I mean, separate from UK, the, uh, the communities, um, the COVID-19 effect to the game industry and hopefully gamification industry and what you expect after uh, COVID-19 institution for a gamification industry? Yeah, so I think most people are aware that the gaming industry is actually doing quite well during the COVID-19 period because people are at home, they're kind of stuck there, they're a little sad and they want to you know, just play more games and experience that and connect to uh, their gaming community. Uh, for the gamification uh, industry itself, I think it's actually pretty interesting because the beginning of the year, we did see a slowdown of many, many different client projects. Uh, actually, many of the big car companies wanted to engage us uh, because mostly because Tesla suddenly went up the charts and they realized they didn't innovate. Uh, then COVID hit, right? And every company is very, was very, very scared, so they put things on pause. Um, so there was a little bit of shakiness there, but then now we're suddenly seeing our clientele being three times or even five times higher than, than before. Uh, and I think it's because a lot of companies are seeing, wow, they must innovate now because in this harsh climate, if they don't innovate the, before, even if they don't innovate, they're making profits, they're happy and they just, they're slow. That's why startups can sometimes beat them, right? Because startups keep innovating because for startups, the default is death. They have to innovate. Big companies, very, very slow. Now we're seeing a lot of big companies realizing they need to innovate and do something new. And I get a lot of messages that people say, oh, obviously everyone's talking about gamification now. Gamification is the new big thing. Our CEO wants to do gamification. So uh, from, from where I see it, I think gamification the industry is it seems to be very, very strong and more and more companies and, uh, is going to uh, see value in it and want to approve budgets for it. So and my big thing is I just want to make sure the whole industry is prepared for that and they actually can uh, design good solutions that solve problems as opposed to uh, some of the more superficial ways that make it look like a game, seem like a game, have some game elements, but doesn't really uh, connect to our core psychology and make us enjoy the experience for long term. Thank you, Yukai. I mean, I will very ask very quickly to Tatiana and Sandra, what do you think about after COVID-19 situation for gamification industry? Tatiana. Um, well, COVID has only, um, as I mentioned prior, has only increased uh, gaming um, participation and activity, right? Uh, uh, conversation around gaming on Twitter has been up and um, uh, live streaming is, a, is at an all-time high, and digital game sales every month, every quarter, um, are breaking records. So, you know, when when thinking about um, you know opportunities to interact and, and gamify in 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 the gaming industry, um, it's it's definitely only going to increase the products and recognition of those opportunities. Is is um, is uh, being you know is being created in real time. There are constantly new initiatives, new products, new uh, new ways to engage. And and the thing that I like to say about you know gaming as a whole is it's quite flexible um, and it, it allows for uh, creative um, 
creative uh, new initiatives um, that you know other scenes don't necessarily always give you that um, ability to you know essentially flex. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're only going to see this industry increase and the ways to activate around it, especially with a lack of, you know, live experiences. Um, there's an even greater need to find ways to engage this audience um, in virtual spaces. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. And also, uh, we, we are having some uh, questions for your examples was great. They like to see more. Probably they can follow you on Twitter. Yes, um, I encourage see. anyone who wants to, you know, dive into, um, you know, some of those examples I shared or, you know, look at, you know, more specific needs, um, you know, definitely feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm quite active there as well as, uh, as well as Twitter. Twitter. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. And Sandra, and what do you think about right after COVID-19 situation? And Pete, I will ask you that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes, it has been increasing. The, the gamification need has been increasing because now people find the urge for digital transformation and digital itself is emotionless and, and boring uh, unless you add those game elements that uh, start to trigger um, and influence uh, the engagement. So uh, we've been asked uh, in several projects uh, to gamify um, uh, onboarding or, uh, or business processes. And even um, one of the interesting clients was thinking about the well-being of the, the, their workers on how they, they, they ha should have like a limited number of uh, Zoom meetings so that they don't uh, go insane. So this is one of the interesting um, uh, projects that I think uh, COVID has triggered digital transformation mainly, and digital transformation would be boring without gamification. Thank you, Sandra, and thank you for everyone, Tatiana, Yukai. I think Pete was here, and thank so it means that it's time. <laughs> and he knows that our time, my time management is not on my good side. You're <laughs> doing well today. Pete, <laughs> yeah, I mean, because of you, and I will ask about a selfie with all together, and that will be good memory for our team. And do you like to make some hand gesture or something like that? Let's do this all together. Do you have any kind of guess, hand gestures? Are, like there, are there any big esports gestures yet? I'm, I'm wondering, you know, in the new I have this one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Pete, and that was a great uh, panel, I think. Thanks for opportunities, and i like to show my T-shirt, and I need, <laughs> hmm. I need this years too, because I, I have a member of the Education Europe community, so this is my reward. <laughs> That's a, it's a really good point. That's the T-shirt from last year's. Yeah. And I was trying to work out whether to do merch in this online world, and <laughs> that was designed and printed in Egypt with Sandra and her yes. team. <laughs> So it's a, it's, a, it's a community that works well together. I've got to say thank you all to this panel. Brilliant. That was a really great way to wrap up today, I have to say. Thank you so much thank for coming from all over the world to attend and speak <clears throat> as well. Um, very chuffed.